Hello, welcome to another episode of Mining Now. Um, Gaudi, I think this is our first episode since I got back from CIM. No, that's not true. No, no. we did one before, yeah. It's blurring, it's blurring together now. <laughs> <laughs> we have just, it's it's been crazy, the amount of companies. I was thinking about that the other day. It's it, it's like uh, it's like a technology and industry overload from multiple industries. So it's yeah. quite fun, quite exciting. Um, we've got to have like companies like Cal Tire on to talk about the the tire industry. Yeah. Now we're going to go into we're going inside the tires. Sweet. <laughs> so um, we've got uh, we've got Maury Jones. He's a director of sales at uh, at Griffin Chemicals, and he's got chemical. <laughs> um, and he is going to be talking about their product Rim Plus Powder. Very interesting. Before we do that, Gaudi, please let's uh, give a shout out to our sponsors. Perfect. So first up, of course, we've got CIM. CIM is the leading membership organization for technical content and creating connections in the mining industry. Mining professionals and students can access a breadth of technical expertise through the CIM Technical Paper Library, the One Mind Digital Repository, the CIM Journal, the CIM Magazine, and also up, uh, attend upcoming CIM uh, webinars. Um, whether you're working in the field, in the office, or at home, join the community today and learn how they can help you achieve your professional goals. Find out more at CIM.org. We also have Savanaugh Equipment. Savanaugh Equipment supplies new and used mining equipment around the world, from placer to underground to ore processing plants. They have gold concentrating tables, trommels, and mineral jigs in stock now to take advantage of the high gold prices. You can visit them at SavanaughEquipment.com where you will find more equipment every day. We also have Power Zone when you need a specialized team of world-class engineers for your oil and gas pipelines, dewatering, or any fluid handling needs, you want to visit PowerZone.com. In addition to their inventory of rebuilt pumps, engines, motors, they also have an amazing team to design and engineer your systems, no matter the challenge, no matter the location. Get in the zone with Power Zone. Visit them at PowerZone.com. And last but not least, uh, please remember to subscribe so you don't miss another episode of Mining Now. You can also um, contact us, info at crownsman.com, if you want to be a part of the show. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much, Gowdy. You're welcome. <laughs> okay. Maury, welcome to the show. Glad to have you on. Glad to, uh, glad to <laughs> uh, unpack a new type of technology, a new product that's being offered to the market. Welcome to Mining Now. Thank you very much, Jared. Um, have you got? Uh, have you had the pleasure of doing many of these long form shows? Actually, no. This is my first. I'm really excited about it. Oh, good, good. Um, it, it it certainly gives you time to unpack. Um, I I feel a little bit slow after learning about your <laughs> about your product because even Rory Rory booked you on the show, um, and then I talked to you, and about a quarter way through the conversation, I realized I completely misunderstood what the product was. I thought you were like I told you I had like this. Uh, I had a cargo flat, so I put this glue stuff inside it to like seal it <laughs> off, and that's I thought you were just doing the the mining sure. tire version of that. So sure. let's start off with, let's, let's, um, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about Griffin chemical in a moment, but let's quickly just talk about what the product you're actually offering to the mining industry is, and then go from there. Sure. Sure. No, no, no problem, Jared. What, what, what really, uh, the mining industry for the last, uh, 30 years has been using in not everywhere in the world, but in, in many places, a liquid additive. Uh, there's many manufacturers, and what the, the whole basis behind having a, a, a small amount of liquid inside these tires is to stop the wheels from rusting or eliminate rust. Because uh, on the inside of the face of the wheel, it's uh, almost impossible to get the tires off if there's rust built up on that wheel. So these products stop the uh, stop that from happening, so that these trucks and different vehicles aren't sitting around waiting to have the tires pulled off. And it, so it takes very little time to get these tires off without any rust. So that's the main premise behind the products uh, that are out there in the liquid form. Um, so there's there's heat reduction. There's other uh, attributes that uh, that follow. Um, so it's it's used in many parts of the world, like I mentioned, but not everywhere. Mm. You know, something I always like to do now on the show, and I didn't always do it, and I think it sometimes confused uh, the audience because then they wouldn't know what the what what the the thing that you were fixing so the way how is it typically done well, how is this type of product typically typically brought to the to the mine site and, and installed in the tires and all that oh, sort of stuff 
Sure, it, it, it's normally brought to the to the mine sites in uh, 275 or 1,000 liter. Uh, I call them totes or IBCs. Um, they they bring them on site. Uh, they uh, there's a valve on the bottom of the of the tote or IBC, and it's poured into a, a pail and walked essentially walked over to the tire before it's before it's mounted and dumped in the tire. Uh, depending on the size of the tire, it determines the quantity of the, of the liquid. And then once they pour the liquid in the tire, it's mounted up onto the wheel and the, the O-rings put on, the uh, uh, all the other rings are put on to keep the tire in place on the, on the wheel itself or the ramp. So, that, that, so when you're talking, I, I'm just picturing, because you've got this, basically you've got a powder form, and but the old way of doing it is you basically fill up these giant totes and are shipping them around. Uh, technically shipping them all over the world is that is that right yes yeah that, that's exactly what's happening and and uh, and th that's why our product is so much more innovative and 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 really industry disrupting uh, because to to ship that amount of liquid i mean one totes 2500 pounds um and mine mining uh, especially in the larger stuff uses uh 30 gallons per tire so you start adding that up in a mine site that's got 80 trucks or 100 trucks, and now you're talking they've got to get containers full of these of these totes shipped in. And um, we can talk about you know the cost of that, of course, but it's 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 extraordinary. And there's really a better way to do it now, but there hasn't been for 30 years. And so I, I'm always curious when you see these situations where like your product, is, your product is one of those uh, products that it, it hits the market and then it's kind of like, oh, that's kind of how it should be done. Is it like how long, how long did it take before your product was like, has it been in development for like several years? Has there been, you know, 20 years ago, did someone try to get it to market and it just, it just didn't catch for whatever reason? Like, like how does it go 30 years with them? shipping big <laughs> totes all over the world for mining operations. <laughs> that's, that's probably one of the harder questions to, to answer. You know, it's like you start doing something one way and you just keep doing it that way. Um, there's, you know, our industry uh, innovates very slowly as far as tires and wheels. I mean, the, the other than certain structures of tires and different sizes, the wheels and tires haven't changed for 30 years. So there's really, there's really not much movement. I mean, even one of our our, uh, our distributors, Haltech. I mean, the valve stems are still valve stems. Yeah. They uh, they've got valve cores in them, and you air the tires up. They, and it really hasn't changed in actually 40 years. Yeah. So you know, it, it, it's it's really something that I I don't know if it's our industry or if it's just the way things are, um, which is why I'm so excited about this. This this powdered product in a water soluble bag is is, is that we've taken uh, the the what do you call it the uh, uh, the market itself kind of turned it on its end and we've mm. reduced uh, you know weight by ninety four percent just by just by going to a powder form. The thing is, I mean, I'd say you're the the person to ask about this as director of sales. The the is there a resistance to like, are people pretty, it seems like, like if, if, if I was a purchasing manager, I, I think I'd be pretty open to the discussion because obviously as soon as 94% weight comes in, if you're reducing it, you've got my attention. Is, are people pretty open to it? Is this a difficult product to get? Has it been a difficult product to get into the market or has it been pretty well received? Well, and that's one of the reasons we're on your show is to talk about it like this, because, you know, there's been, been a lot of travel in the last year and so. So, you know, it's been it's been tough. I think when people see it actually work um, or and hopefully you're you're going to share some of the videos and stuff, too, of course. But when see, when they see how easy it is, though, most people that we've shown it to, which is, was a while ago, they went, oh, that makes all the sense. Um, but there again, our industry is slow and changing. Um, and this product is probably less than 1% of somebody's tire budget. So it's right. really on the top of the list, you might say. Um, but it is, it is again, very innovative. And so I, I'm, I'm hoping that with, with, uh, 
with what happens today with with your with, with the show and also tra- follow up travel and different things now that we can get out and do what we need to do um things will start picking up do you do, do you get a lot of yeah i guess that would be the thing do you get a lot of questions about it or do it, it, do people, I mean, I, I took way too long to figure out what you were doing. <laughs> way too long. I, it's just sometimes your mind gets locked. Maybe that's the industry's problem. <laughs> your mind gets locked into something. And I was like, oh, yeah. it's just like I did with on my Toyota. Oh, I, I even talked to Rory on the phone. He's like, well, it's kind of like that. I was like, yeah, no, it's good. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and maybe that's part of the problem. Do once you get in front of people and start having the conversation, is it, uh, I mean, I think you have actually some videos of it being being used on mine sites is it sort of that aha moment that we, they just get what you're talking about yes yes and in fact one of our distributors coined a slogan a while ago that i've been using you know it's a, it's stop shipping water and yeah, yeah. It, it it just makes too much sense right um but when they um, until they actually use it or they see how it's used um it, 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 they just don't i guess they just don't get it yeah, you know, I remember, I, I remember hearing, uh, you know, like those little pods that you put in the dishwasher now. I don't know if anybody actually uses the liquid stuff for dishwashers anymore. Maybe they do. But I remember, I, I actually have heard discussions about which is better, the pod or the or the uh, the solution that you just dump in liquid. It's the same thing. It's just one's a powder right. with water, with the water added to it. So I think, is that part of it? It's just, it's just that that comfort level, especially if it's 1% of the budget, they just go, well, it's the same thing, but you know, I'll, we'll just keep going with it. Exactly. You know, I, I remember when I first saw my, the first pot uh, for detergent, I'm like, how is this going to work? Right. And you know, I, I, when I actually used it, I was like, Oh, well, that's obvious. And, and now <laughs> I think most households use the darn stuff, right? Yeah. You don't spill it. It's easy to throw in. Uh, you don't put too much or too less in. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, that kind of an application is the same thing for Rim Plus. And I think it makes, you know, when you compare those two, people kind of shake their heads, go, oh, okay, I understand. Yeah. It, it, and I was, it's nice because you actually sent the video and it, it is, it is very much like those pods, right, Maury? Like it is, it, it comes in like a, a bag and you, so the installation is, again, another thing I was confused about. I was thinking it was, again, referring it back to mine. I thought you like put it into the stem or something and like, which doesn't even make sense on mining tires. So the installation is, it's exactly the same um as the other type of chemical it's really that shipping and getting it there but once you get it you draw what's the process i will bring the videos up but but just sort of walk us through it that's sure it's it's really no different than what what we just talked about with the detergents and stuff you 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 grab a bag and you throw the whole bag into the tire and either the tire has water in it before or, or after you throw the bags in the number of bags determines the quantity of water you put in the tire, depending on the size of the tire, of course. And it automatic, it, it starts immediately as soon as it hits the water, starts to uh, dissolve. Uh, actually, it's very quick, uh, even in cold water. Does the, the other thing that I kind of wanted to mention, I know this is a little bit of a pivot, but um, is, you know, we've had, we've had people on the show that are coming they're, they're sort of, it's like a standalone product in their, for their comp, um, that this, this is what their company do, but this is not the case with Griffin chemical Griffin chemical is in, they're a chemical company and this is one stream that they're offering to the mining industry. So I thought, I thought it was kind of important, Maury, you know, before we get too deep into the interview to sort of talk about who Griffin is. So could you kind of give that, uh, that backstory of who's uh, backing the product? Sure. Sure. That's that, you know, and I, I haven't been working there a long time, but I've learned a lot about the company and it was actually founded in 1934 by a pharmacist. Oh, wow. And so it's been around over 85 years. Um, we produce around 400 different chemicals for about 12 different industries, mm. the tire industry being one, of course. Um, but we're in janitorial and sanitation. Uh, we're in uh, even we've got truck washes. We've got asphalt release formulas. Oh, wow. uh, we've got dust suppressants that uh, go to Japan. I mean, so it, it's a company, you know, that's, well, thank goodness, growing. Uh, and we've got roughly 25,000 square feet and we're adding another 12,000 uh, by the summer. Uh, we've changed some uh 
some different uh, uh, things uh, at the company. We've got we should be ISO certified by September, mm. uh, which is pretty exciting. Um, so it's it's the the company over the eighty years has entered you know consistently entered new markets uh, every few years, and so it's been a uh, it, it's fun to see the his, historical uh, aspects of the company, and it's even more fun for me, especially being uh, at, at my current uh, level, being in the tire business so long, and where we're heading there, and that responsibility for for director of sales not only do i get a call uh from a janitorial company wanting uh some uh, epa regulated epa registered products i get the call from the uh the tire dealer that needs uh, a tire dressing or a uh or a bead lubricant or something like that oh so you're doing all of that stuff in the tire in the tire sector as well then Yes. Yeah. So what is more than one product we have for the tire sector and have for many, uh, many years. We even make a soap to make sure that we get all the carbon black off your hands, which is something that that happens when you're in retreading in the tire business and things like that. We actually design a product to remove that that uh, particular substance off all these guys' hands that are working with the tires every day. Yeah, we've we've done some episodes about, about exactly that, that changing these tires, these giant tires. What is um, so? What is your, if you don't mind me asking, what's what's the distribution model for for Griffin Chemical? Is that are are you doing it through dealers? Are you doing it direct? Um, like like even for the product that we're talking about, uh, Rim Plus Power Powder Powder. I am stumbling today. I was doing so good the last few episodes. <laughs> It's too much, too much, uh, too you much know, summer. The weather's getting too nice. That's what it is. I think it, it happens a lot when you you think you know what the word is, and then they go, "Oh, actually, that was wrong." So now you're self conscious of that that you're going to say it wrong. So, so you say it wrong. <laughs> you know me too well. That's exactly what that. Um, so rim, like rim plus powder. Um, how are people? Uh, so how what is the distribution model on this on the mining side but just also in in general as a company well i i would have to say most of the products are are delivered through uh, distributors okay. um and even the, the the tire products um you know i'm, I'm not going to go on the mine side and put it in myself mm-hmm. uh there's people out there that know a lot more about tires and and different things than i do even though i've been doing this for 40 years um, there are experts on site that uh, understand uh, quantities that need to be in the tire better. Uh, they understand whether or not they've got heat issues. Uh, so they, they understand what their, their tire, particular tire programs. And I've, I have been all over many places in the world and everywhere I've gone, it's the tire programs are just, you know, a little bit different and some of them are a lot different. So, uh, but mostly through distributors. I would say, what is your what, like? I, I wouldn't mind more again if you don't if you don't uh, mind to is to kind of go back through that you know and and could, because you're in an industry you you've got a newer product on the market backed by a company that's been around for years. I think you said 1934. Yeah, said? exactly. <laughs> Crazy. So, what, what what sort of can you give us a snapshot of your experience coming into the industry and then sort of how that ties in? Um, to trying to get a new product to the market, sort of what you're bringing to the table when you're trying to have these conversations and, and trying to get this product in the door. You mean essentially my background to today? Yes, exactly. Okay. All right. Well, that's fairly, fairly simple. It won't take too long, I promise. But <laughs> <laughs> we got time. I, I actually started out 40 years ago with a, a duck build sledgehammer uh, breaking down 10 or 20 bias ply tires. Oh, okay. and for an independent tire dealer here in Oregon and uh, went from there to, you know, sales and management in the, in the company and then uh, went went to work in the tire additive industry for, for many, many years and learned so many things uh, that, that it helped me understand everything from calcium chloride that was uh, that I used to put in when I was a, when I worked for the tire uh, tire dealer to uh, beet juice for ballast. Uh, uh, many uh, puncture sealants that are now out there, which is a, a thick liquid product to help the tires. Uh, if they get a hole in it or nail in it, it would seal that temporarily, seal that uh, hole. So the, the experience for that 
and and all all the, all the travel that I've done and the different places I've seen gets me even at, even at this late stage in my in the game very excited even more about the the dry product or the powdered product because it's so much better for the environment so much better for the customer it's so much it's so much cheaper uh, believe it or not it's uh, so it, it, I wish I was back 25 years ago and could do this it's right it's so disrupting and so exciting I've I've been that type of person even when I was selling tires and retreading tires and things, I always wanted to take care of my customers. Mm. The customer was, you know, was the the focus. And with this product, again, the customer is the focus. I'm helping the end user uh, reduce their space that they need storage. I'm helping the customer uh, uh, not take, you know, the handling is much easier. Uh, there, there's a lot of other, you know, other attributes to the, to the dry product. So as you can see, I'm, uh, very passionate about about this because it makes so much so much sense do you you know it's it's funny like i remember doing the first episodes um of of this show and it was almost like uh it was almost like just pure adrenaline you just come in and you're just trying so hard to do a good job it's like you don't even feel the show happen it's you're just sure. you're just so focused in and and that's and i've worked in sales as well so that's sort of that feeling like when you start first make your your first few sales it's like uh it's it's just sort of almost like a blur yeah but and i find the then there was a stage where you sort of this is for me you get frustrated because you don't feel like you're doing um like i'm doing the interviews very well but then you start to learn a few things and then it starts to be like you're actually there you're actually applying some skill and then and you're still sort of interested in what the 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 person is talking about and so then it really becomes enjoyable i i found by about episode 50 i really started to find a lot of enjoyment in doing these shows and it was relaxing and, and just being right. able to have a conversation do you find that experience has have you kind of went through that journey working in in sales and customer service for as long as you have that sort of that that arc of you know and still being able to be excited today walking in and talking about a new product yes without a doubt i i especially when you've got a new product i mean there again i hate to come back to the the boring part of the tire industry is that they're black and round they go on wheels and you put air in them. I mean, that that can be very boring. Of dollars. <laughs> <laughs> but in in mining and construction, uh, there's many more things to look at. And having that advantage of, of seeing many different operations where, you know, there's one site I went to, uh, they had uh, a bead of uh, on the wheel itself. They had a, a bead about this this white all the way around the wheel that was rusty. And the rest of the wheel looked okay, but it but it was just this piece of, of rust all the way around the wheel, and, and they couldn't figure out what was wrong. And so I, I, I they asked me for some help, and you know I, I was happy to to do that. And what we found out was that the bead lubricant that was being used was being left in the sunshine mm -hmm. and was separating, and the rust inhibitors were are, were essentially evaporating out of the oh. out of the bead loop, and they didn't know. And so once I told them that they had to keep it mixed and keep it in an area that wasn't wasn't in in the middle of the sunshine, uh, though that some of that rust went away. And so it was it was very it was very helpful for, felt for, for them. Um, so I still get excited about er, about every about every aspect of this business, and I always have. Um, in fact, I think one gentleman I think I was in Australia, and I and I got up on on the desk and I and he goes. Hey, relax. Sit, sit back down. It's uh, we can talk about it, <laughs> but I I get too excited sometimes. Um, <laughs> well, so. I got to figure out how to get you to that point on the show, and we, we'll get some viral <laughs> video stuff happening. <laughs> I'll make sure to put your logo in the corner, and then have you really getting amped up. <laughs> um, so I just wanted to quickly. I, I don't want to get into too technical, Amori, but it, it it's sort of I I can't imagine that. Uh, 20 years from now, these giant totes will be getting shipped all over the world with, again, shipping water. <laughs> it's, it's ridiculous. Um, once you've, you've entered the market, you become strong in the market, you know, the company that's behind you, all these things that you have in place, it just seems it is going to change the way that this product, this type of product is distributed. Right. 
How I wanted to talk a little bit about is it the same as the old product, but with an additive that turns it into into that powder form? Or, or are you able to talk a little bit about that? Obviously, I mean, I, I don't know about trade secrets and all that. I'm just asking the question. Are you able to sort of unpack that a little bit for us? Well, the Gr- Griffin Chemical has been making powders for years mm. uh, in, in all different industries. And so there's there's a way to do it. You can't just throw the uh, all the constituents that, that all the different additive manufacturers make and, and put it in a bag. There's more to it than that. Um, there's, uh, there, and it, like, like you said, I'm not gonna get into the chemical chemistry of it, um, but there is a way to do it. And with the water soluble bag made it, um, made it patentable uh, according uh, so so far, we haven't like I said, haven't received the patent. Still patent pending, but it, it made it so that it's actually uh, uh, a ready to use product. Um, where if you just have the powder, that it doesn't doesn't work that way. Um, it, you need to put it in that bag, make it easy for the customer. Because if we make it harder for them, they're not going to use it. Right, got to make it easier. Yeah. So, Maury, we talked a little bit about the, you know, obviously the shipping element, shipping water, that sort of thing. But I, because I'm not buying it, I'm probably not thinking of some of the the questions, the sort of the roadblocks that you run into or the main selling points and things like that. Could you just kind of walk through? I mean, I know it, as we, I think you mentioned it earlier in the interview, sort of that environmental aspect is is also there, um, which I'm sure the minds perk right up as soon as you say that. Um, so can you just sort of walk through some of the selling points that you go through when you're talking to a potential new customer? Sure, sure. Well, and we talk, and I, I apologize if I'm, if I'm repeating myself, but it's easier to, to go through the different things uh, one by one. But obviously, you know, if you've got less weight that you're, that you're having to deal with, which, is, which coincides with the less cost per, uh, for shipping. Uh, you've also got less volume. Uh, you're not, you're, you reduce the need for storage. I mean, if you can picture your 20 or 30 or 40, uh, 275 gallon totes in your yard versus uh, a pallet and a half of uh, cases of uh, the water soluble bags, that's a big difference just in space, uh, especially if you're in a place that has to warehouse them inside or keep them from freezing or whatever. You, you're not having to deal with that with a, with a powder. Yeah. Um, the uh, so and the, also the reduction in handling. Now you you instead of handling twenty or forty totes, uh, you need a forklift to move around. You've got uh, a, a case that you can pick up that only weighs thirty six pounds. So it's it's a it's really a a, a big deal. Yeah. Um, you know, it almost feels it's it's like as you're talking about it, it's almost like a hard thing to it's it's almost hard to take seriously that this isn't just the standard. <laughs> it's like, I know. As you walk through it, I'm like, I, I don't really, it's almost like I don't know what to ask you. I'm like, oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and, you know, it's, it is, it sounds obvious, Jared, but it, but it, it hasn't been. And uh, which is another reason why we're reaching out to you guys again, because it's, it's really important that, that this, uh, that we get some other people thinking about it and yeah. maybe asking some questions. Um, and then me getting back on the road and, uh, and, and showing some people what's, what's, what's going on. Uh, when you can throw two or three bags in a tire and add some water and mount the tire, it's just, <laughs> it, it's to you and I and to everybody, it's really simple. And I thought, uh, I, I, I still think it, and I, you can tell by my attitude and, and passion that it, uh, it is the way to go after 40 years of experience doing this seeing things, everything from South Africa to Australia to throughout North America and Mexico. And it, it just makes too much sense. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, and that's what the, I'm thinking of it too. I mean, you, you, some of these uh, sites, you know, with these giant storage facilities and that, but that's not the case for a lot of mining operations. They, they are limited in space. The, the roads, they don't want to have a bunch of liquids pounding up and down some of these roads. And I mean, there's a lot of situations globally where, where this would just, I mean, it would just eliminate an annoyance. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, think about spillage. I mean, I don't know how many times the uh, these liquid totes leak, um, and uh, on the ground, you're not going to get that with a. I mean, 
you're not going to get that with a bag unless you break a bag open, which that's, that's a little bit, it's pretty tough. Yeah. Um, you know, if you spill some water, who cares? <laughs> yeah, right. It's, it's, I want to go, you know, and I, I have to say, I think, you know, as I've got to know you and I, when we started this, I didn't realize that, that was the, the setup, but your, your son actually bought Griffin chemical, right? Yes. Yes. He actually did. Yeah. Last December, uh, he and Ryan, the, uh, the previous owner came to a, an agreement and, uh, actually Matt's had 15 years in the, uh, in the industry also, in the tire okay. industry also. And, uh, he, he, uh, took this company on and it's, uh, for, for a father, it's been really exciting to watch. Uh, no kidding. Yeah. <laughs> you know, your, your son do something like this. It's, uh, it's also very scary too. I mean, <laughs> uh, you've got them all of a sudden overnight, you have employees to take care of. You've got, uh, uh, you've got to figure out how to help them, help them make their jobs easier. Mm. Uh, there's a lot of, uh, regulations, uh, when you have a chemical company. Uh, so right. there's, there's a lot of things to learn. I mean, we even make some products, uh, that have to be kosher. Uh, so it's, it, he's learning all sorts of different things, uh, about running a, a, a company that's 85, well, more than 85 years old. Yeah. That's, that's the thing. I mean, you hear, I mean, people buy companies, oh, they've been around 20 years. Um, when you get into that sort of legacy, I mean, you're, it's, it's, it's kind of something special and it must be something special for you as well to be able to, I, I mean, be part of taking his products to market. I mean, that's, that's, that's something rare. That doesn't happen in everybody's life where you get, you get to provide that sort of hands-on support, you know, to a son that, that's taken on that type of responsibility. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, uh, yeah. I'm very proud of him. I think he's going to be great. Uh, it's just, uh, uh, there's really no end in sight, uh, there's so many industries that we have access to now uh, that uh, that we can uh, promote some products to uh, the cement industry, the asphalt industry, the, uh, the janitorial and sanitation. It's just it's uh, <laughs> it's almost too much. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot. Yeah. No, I mean, we've had chemical companies on before. I mean, it's a it's the the industry is it's overwhelming. Like it's, mm -hmm. it's one of these industries that is just, it's everywhere. Like it's, it's stuff you don't even think of as, I mean, the war, chemicals are literally woven into our, our world right now. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. So, you know, when you, when you came on, I mean, what, what's day one, like, you know, I, I we've, we've talked, we've talked about rim plus powder and, you know, we've talked a little bit about the company. So I'm going to get a little bit personal now. What, What's day one like? Your son, your son just bought a company, and not just act, just any company. It's a company that's been around for eighty five plus years, and and you you're both bringing in experience. You're obviously bringing in the thirty plus years of it. Right. I mean, what is day one like? That conversation where you're standing in your new in his new office. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well uh, day, day one is like it, it, for for actually both of us was uh, even a bit before that because. He, he, he had actually worked there a bit before actually mm. buying the company. Right. Um, but he would, he, he, and, he and I both worked out in, in the warehouse. Mm. We, we went out there and we packaged and we saw how it was done. We did it ourselves. Uh, we lifted up the boxes and put them on pallets. We filled up gallon jugs. We filled up uh, uh, detergent in the, in the, ba in the plastic bags. We, uh, we did written plus, of course, <laughs> you know, we, we, we did all those physical things and we, and we still do and to some extent. Uh, but it was, it was imperative that we go out there and see how the products are, are put together and learn more about all the, all the raw materials. It's amazing. You know, you come in one door, you mix it and it goes out the other. And it's, it's different from, from what I did in the past, from the tire changing tires yeah. to, to you know selling one product uh tire additive uh now to as i mentioned you know 400 and don't get me wrong it doesn't dilute our efforts for sales because my experience will go toward the tire the tire side of it right uh where, where matt's learning many different things and as we expand we'll add salespeople to different industries and right and that will all move forward i think just naturally 
Um, but it is exciting for a father to watch his son do this. Yeah. Is he, uh, uh, from a strategic side, when, when the company was, when, when he took the company over, did he was, was rim plus, was that a priority product at the time? Was it already like, it was already developed and ready to go or where was that at when he bought it? It, it was already, it was already developed and ready to go for sure. Yeah. yeah. And, and it was interesting because Matt and Ryan, uh, they came up with it and it was, kind of Matt's idea. He asked Ryan how th- if this could work mm. and they put their heads together and they figured it out. And it wasn't just, it didn't happen like overnight. You know, you oh. can't take a powder, whether it's a dish detergent or rim plus and just, uh, and, and just go, Oh, just put these together. It'll work fine. Right. There's, there's a lot of trial and a lot of error. Um, just to mix constituents or different raw materials together in a granular form, things have to flow properly so that the mix is right. So it's it's not rocket science, but it's not easy either. Right. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's quite interesting. I, I, I'm I think by nature I'm a fairly curious person. I would love to be on the a fly on the wall those first couple months um, that your son's <laughs> taking on a new company. I mean, I've I've seen uh, I. I've worked for my father's company and I, and I've had um, him listen to me talk about something <laughs> I'm about to get started. Um, sometimes slightly sk- skeptic. Other times I've seen him and I'm talking and I can tell he, he is trying to be supportive, which is actually to me quite touching. And I can tell he thinks what I'm saying is completely wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well, the uh, it, Matt, Matt and I do get into it once in a while and it's quite fun. Sure. <laughs> and uh, and Ryan, the uh, the previous owner, and uh, and and currently the he's a, also the CEO, and still he's a formulating chemist, which really helps answer a lot of questions for Matt and I. Um, but the, when the three of us get together, it's uh, I I it's crazy. It's it's not a party, but it's damn close. <laughs> right? Is it? Is it? I mean, does it just, it must take it to another level though, when you're working in that sort of, when the stakes are that high for him, you know, and obviously you, everything in you wants him to succeed. Right. It must just give that extra motivation when you're, you, you're out talking to a customer and all that sort of stuff. Is it almost like a new shot in the arm um, from having all this experience, but now having this sort of new level of, of passion essentially to, to bring? I, I think it helps, but you know, the, the, the real, the real, thing for me, I think mean, I keep coming back to this, but the real thing for me is that we're, we're not, we've got this new product that you're not shipping water all over the world again. And I get excited right. about that. Right. Um, you know, having it be my son's company is great. And, uh, and I, and I love it, but really I come back to my roots and it's like, mm. you know, why, why, why didn't this come up 20 years ago? And I've been asked that question many times. And yeah, I can't it's, a question I, it's a question I have too. I, I don't quite, you know, but I yeah. guess, I, I mean, I guess the same with pods. I mean, really uh, pods have only been around. Um, and I always say, I always say the mining industry, um, you know, not obviously in what they specialize in, but I'm talking about like uh, communication strategies, you know, the way mm-hmm. they leverage off new technology and even social media and things like that. They're always about 10 years behind. Um, and mm-hmm. I've been in the industry long enough to know it's, it's pretty accurate. Um, in, and I think that's probably what it is because it's, it's probably only been about, I mean, maybe has it been 20 years since the little pods you put in the, the dishwasher? I don't think so. You know, I don't think so either, but I, you know, I honestly can't, uh, can't tell you, Jared. I, it's, it, it seems to me about 10 years ago, you started to see a lot of it. I'm sure they were around and they'd be mixed in with sort of the thing. They'd have little samples hanging off the side. They were trying to kind of convince people to do it and all right. that sort of stuff. But in your case, you don't you don't sell the liquid, right? That, that's something we should clarify. You don't sell the liquid. You don't sell your own competition, do you? Well, I, I don't want to because <laughs> I don't think it's the right thing to do. But of course, we, we, we do. We, we, okay. we, we okay. do sell the liquid. Um, not, so not very much. Hanging those little samples on the side. <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea. Here's, here's, you can use this, but this is what you should be using. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Boy, thanks for coming on the show. I'm, you know, it's, it's, I, and like you said, you keep coming back to, um, about, you know, you're not, you're not shipping water and all that. It's, it is exciting to see. I, we have a lot of technology stuff on the show. It's a lot of computer based and sensor based. And I, and I love that technology, 
But there is also this huge place for just practical ways to save. Exactly. Just, yes. just, it's just something that should be done. It doesn't take any new technology within the company. You just need to have, you don't even need to have more storage space. You need to have less storage space. Right. And, and so it's nice to have a company on like yourself when really the last few episodes really have focused so much on sort of this technological approach to efficiency rather than this practical one. So thank you for coming on. I really do appreciate it. And it's exciting to see this type of innovation in the mining industry. Thanks so much, Jared. Okay. That is the episode of mining. Now Um, I I feel like uh, maybe if they do that, a little package thing on the side, maybe I'll get a little commission or something. (laughs) No, never that was your whole goal. That was my, that's, that's all I've been that's working That's what you were like, you know what, I'm going to say this I'm so say that, that I can get. <laughs> it won't work. Um, well, I love, I, they ever, they, what I like about that is it's a new, it's a, it's a product that the, that's sort of new to the market at this point, yeah. but it's backed by a company with 85 plus years. Yeah. So that's, that, it's a little extra excitement, I think for me, and I'm sure for the, the people that are watching that are potential customers. Mm-hmm. Um, Gowdy, where can everybody like, follow, suggest, guess, um, make fun of me stumbling all over the place today, that sort of, th- sort of thing. <laughs> I couldn't even say that right. <laughs> okay. Um, well, please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss a single episode of Mining Now, Crownsman Energy, or The Crownsman Show. If you want to be part of one of the shows, you can also contact us, info at crownsman.com. Um, and yeah, I'll, I'll have a uh, little bloopers of, uh, of, Eric, <laughs> of all the episodes. Actually, you know what, that's what we should do for like year end. All the like put a, a blooper clip of all our, <laughs> our stumbles and retakes. <laughs> you know, the, the self-conscious side of me goes, no, but the other side of me that knows people will enjoy it says yes. <laughs> okay. Um, thank you, Gowdy. Thank you, Maury. Uh, go to the, we're going to have their websites, uh, Griffin chemical rim plus powder. We're going to have all the links. Um, you can go check it out. Please do that. It's a great product and we will see you on the next episode of mining now. <laughs>